Welcome to Taiwan Talks, I'm Rath Wang. Russian President Vladimir Putin chose China as the destination for his first state visit upon re-election. We'll take a deep dive into what China and Russia's no-limits relationship really entails and what it means for the U.S., Taiwan, and the region as a whole. Joining us today are Lai Yizhong, Prospect Foundation President, Chong Li Li, National Zhengzhi University, Institute of International Relations Professor and Research Fellow. A very warm welcome to both. Xi Jinping rolled out the red carpet for Putin, receiving a massive military parade. It was clearly grander than for many other state visits. President, is this deliberate? Is China trying to send a message to the West or is it out of pure friendship? I think it's both yes and no. Uh, yes, in, its, in the sense that uh, China want to demonstrate to the, to the Western that, that the special relation between uh, Xi Jinping and Putin. But no, that is because Russia always has a very special place in Xi Jinping's mind. So that the Xi Jinping always took Russia as a special uh, partner uh, in his external relationship. Professor Li, what does China gain from treating Russia mm -hmm. special as President Lai mentioned. Mm, okay, I think instead of asking what China gains, probably uh, more important is to see what China wanted to deliver the messages, what kind of the message want, uh, China want to deliver here. I think at least uh, three points. One, of course, is the continuation of the uh, improving or upgraded relations with Russia. And second one is reinforce and uh, uh, consolidate the communist partnership in the world, to show that to the world. The third one, of course, is uh, uh, to tell the world that even under great pressure from international community, that China will not abandon Russia. Um, and it's interesting you mentioned that um, China's trying to consolidate um, this communist alliance with Russia, and um, he also just came back from Europe, which included a visit with Putin. Former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called the China-Russia partnership a significant risk. What do you think the former Secretary of State means by that? The reaction from uh, U.S. and the reaction from uh, Ch uh, Europe should be different. Okay, so in, ter in terms of uh, uh, his trip to Europe, um, I think uh, he selected three countries, right? Serbia, uh, France, and Hungary. I think they, it, it, it's intentionally uh, the, that he selected these three countries. And some also, some argue that this is kind of uh, a strategy to divide Europe countries, just like what, uh, you, what China did to Southeast Asia countries, because Serbia and uh, uh, Hungary, uh, they have strong economic ties, especially they both are participating in BRI, the Enroll Initiative. Okay, for France, uh, France always uh, uh, assert that uh, our pursue strategic autonomy uh, against uh, what the U.S. Ch uh, trying to impose uh, on their foreign policy. So I think these two, two I, I mean uh, France, uh, also share the war, the vision of a war as a, a multipolar world, so this, this point kind of shared by uh, China as well. So he selected these uh, three, three countries uh, uh, intentionally, I think we, we explained that uh, see these are gateways for him to get into uh, Europe. And the US, of, of course, sees things differently. So EU itself uh, still struggle, uh, still struggling um, to come out a uh, coherent or unitary reactions to um, what happened recently, especially uh, on the enhancement of bilateral heights between Russia and China. Uh, and uh, at the same time also allowed individual members to kind of have their rooms to develop individual relations, individually uh, bilateral relations with China. Okay. But uh, it's more like a non-zero sum game to EU as a whole. Right, because the EU is not a monolith. Um, yes. I wanted to draw this um, what the professor just mentioned in terms of um, China trying to divide Europe. How successful do you feel China is in terms of that, and how does the U.S. see this? Uh, in terms of the China-EU uh, relationship, I think Chinese uh, intention to divide the EU, uh, first of all, between EU and the United States, uh, wasn't very successful. Uh, although the France uh, has its own visual, uh, version of the uh, strategic autonomy, and then China want to take advantage of it, but uh, the way that France is doing is actually to demonstrate to the United States that France also has its own way to dealing with China. 
uh, rather than uh, France trying to co op with China in order to uh, show the differences between the United uh, between itself and the United States. So I think the, the Chinese probably miscalculate that. And then the Chinese, uh, the Xi Jinping, his visit to the Serbia and uh, to Hungary, both of them, uh, they are not a uh, important country within the European Union uh, or within Europe. And uh, Xi Jinping visit there in order to demonstrate that uh, he has a successful uh, overseas visit uh, to show to the domestic audience that uh, he is still the leader that the international uh, audience still uh, veered and uh, would like to pay respect to. But the, but the problem is that the, both Hungary and the Serbia, they are not the kind of the European, uh, the so-called friendly or the, uh, the states that everyone really look up to. Uh, they become a, some of the issues, uh, not just with Brussels, but also with the, the Warsaw, uh, with the Prague, and uh, not to mention uh, the Serbia, his uh, issue with uh, Kosovo, in which uh, all the major European uh, nations, they have a, re a diplomatic rec recognition with. Is this relationship, this growing relationship between Russia and China concerning? Do you feel it will affect Taiwan, will it affect the current conflict going on in the Middle East with Israel and Hamas? Um, if you ask me, I will say that the, the Russia-China relation definitely will affect Taiwan, especially after the war in Ukraine. In the past, uh, when we talk about the Russia-China relation, although they are getting closer, but, um, and Xi Jinping always also talked to the, uh, Putin about his plan on Taiwan, because I remember back in year 2021, Putin uh, in a month uh, come out of nowhere talk about that uh, he advised him not to uh, attack Taiwan because it would be much cheaper to buy Taiwan or uh, they are, uh, he economically absorb Taiwan rather than the military attack against Taiwan. And for the Putin suddenly come out with those statements uh, publicly, uh, definitely shows that uh, there are some private conversations uh, already going on between the, uh, Xi Jinping and the Putin. And probably Xi Jinping, um, he uh, voluntarily uh, told the Putin about his own plan. And that, uh, is th if that episode is true, that also explains uh, in an interesting the China, uh, Russia, the leadership uh, dynamics. But and after the war in Ukraine, and the geopolitical uh, connection between the, um, the both sides of the, uh, the Euro-Asian continent started to merge together. And uh, the uh, Russia also de uh, depend on China very much in order to con uh, continue its war plan on uh, Ukraine. And China at the same time started to demand uh, Russia's cooperation on the issue of Taiwan. So like, um, uh, although uh, Russia in the past always insists that the Taiwan is a part of the China, yes, they, they do say that. But uh, about the, uh, the supporting Chinese plan on unifying Taiwan, this is the first time that Russia started publicly uh, out its own word in supporting it. So you think it's a request from Xi Jinping directly with, under closed doors or behind um, uh, there, there could be a there could be a request or the uh, the the Putin showing the political support, but uh, the complication is that in the past we always assumed that Russia probably would not directly involve, uh, will play more as a uh, intelligence or political support, but now uh, when we look at the, the China Russia the military drills over the years, especially uh, from year 2012, the Navy military drills, and last year there uh, there is a live fire the China-Russia uh, military drill just uh, outside, very uh, near the Taiwan, uh, in which uh, the Taiwan scenario is the one that's at play. And so that's why the, uh, the U.S. Uh, Director of National Intelligence, Alvin Haynes, uh, talk about the Rus possible Russia factor in the issue of Taiwan. So right now we just cannot uh, assume that the Russia would not directly involve. Uh, it seems that all the calculation, uh, we have to uh, uh, re- uh, Re-establish our assumption as well as the uh, re-evaluation uh, what is going on between Russia and China. Professor Lee, I wanted yeah. to draw to you in terms of mm -hmm. the Russia-China relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that with more vocal support from Russia of China's stance on Taiwan, could Russia be militarily involved and would that mm -hmm. embolden Xi Jinping or the PLA to take military action mm -hmm. against Taiwan? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the uh, impact of this bilateral, bilateral talk or bilateral meeting between Xi, Xi and Putin, how that will have affect uh, cross trade issues here or, cross, uh, or Taiwan security here? I do have different uh, 
observations. Okay, so I don't I I, I kind of will read all the open documents uh, more than uh, um, guessing what they are doing behind the screen. <laughs> so uh, um, basically on their joint statement, we can see from this time, I do see some new elements added in their, in their statement here. And the let's uh, really send alarming uh, signal to us to think about it, okay. I think the, uh, in the statement, they emphasize that both uh, China and Russia, they are a, a, a stabilizing force for world order. Okay, so when they use that, they try to work together, uphold so-called uh, fairness and, and uh, justice uh, to uh, to kind of govern the world. Okay, so this is kind of uh, a challenge to U.S. Right, because the U.S. Uh, is think is talking about democracy values, but here they emphasize fairness and uh, justice of the world order. So uh, this also gives us a signal that probably in addition to uh, we are familiar with this like-minded democracy, democracy uh, alliance, right? Uh, in addition to that, uh, they provide an alternative to the global south, seeing that uh, probably just and fair are the fairness and justice are what uh, you should pursue rather than just seek, uh, looking at the democracy. And this probably will change uh, the support uh, from other countries if they only see democracy in Taiwan. Setting um, Europe aside, President, do you feel that China and Russia will successfully build this world order? Or do you feel that the U.S. still has an advantage in terms of bringing countries together around the world, including that of Taiwan? No, I do not think that China, Russia, uh, right now, uh, even with their combined forces, they are able to build a new uh, world order. Uh, what they did is uh, successful to uh, get all the spoiler forces um, together, uh, the China, Russia, uh, Iran, North Korea, and possibly also with Venezuela. Uh, those countries, they have the strong contempt against the current uh, established world order and uh, they have every incentive to uh, try to change it or at least destroy it. Uh, but uh, they are not strong enough to establish new one. Although China definitely wanted to build a new one, uh, you could see through from year 2021 all the way to year 2023, the three global uh, sum initiative, global uh, development initiative, global security initiative, and a global cultural initiative. And those three initiatives, it definitely chi uh, does demonstrate Chinese intention uh, to build something new, uh, different from the United States uh, in, in Chinese image. But uh, we do not see that the China has the same, uh, the Russia has the same intention or has the same plan uh, in doing so. What Russia uh, worry about is most about how to uh, prevent uh, the EU as well as NATO uh, at their influence in its doorstep, trying to prevent them from ever encroaching, and also trying to exert its own influence uh, in its former satellite states. Uh, so whether that is uh, Ukraine, part of the uh, Soviet Union, or uh, the, the three uh, Baltic states like uh, the Lithuania, uh, Estonia, and uh, uh, Latvia, uh, just like those. Uh, so I, I think right now it's still in a competition, but uh, basically uh, it's U.S. game to lose. Professor Lee, diving into the relationship between these two countries, um, Russia and China, how do you feel the dynamics are in terms of, it seems that she could be leading this relationship. Do you agree to that statement? Mm. Yes, I, I do agree with you. I, at the current uh, situation, I think uh, uh, Russia needs China more than China needs uh, Russia. And we can see that once, uh, uh, you know, because of the sanction against it, Russia, right? So there's no choice for, or the, the business or the government of Russia, they have to seek an other channel to uh, their, their economic development. Uh, so they have this look east and search for Chinese market, of course. But what's more important, uh, according to my uh, observations, is the people in Russia, they also try to uh, look at uh, Chinese as a, as a destination for their visit, and especially for students. Now uh, students choose uh, uh, China, over Europe or over uh, the How United How much of that is because of the sanctions that the U.S. and its allies have put in mm -hmm. force? I think I think I think uh, no, but no one in the in the world or no country in the world would like to be isolated when international pre pressure is uh, this much uh, against uh, 
Russia, I think uh, people there also feel that inconvenience, so they try to seek another off off offset for their um, As an alternative to yes. the economic sanctions. And I wanted to draw back to Taiwan a bit. Tsai Ing-wen mentioned in her last interview with the BBC as president the importance of continuing to support Ukraine despite voices around the world that um, that support should be drawn to other places, including that of Taiwan. President, do you agree with what the former president has mentioned? Yeah, I do believe that. Uh, and I know, I, I think the argument is that um, uh, should the, uh, the Ukraine uh, was, uh, isn't an able to successfully resist against the Russian invasions, uh, not only the, the NATO, the Western democracy, all the, uh, the solidarity uh, uh, to support Ukraine will be proven to be uh, ineffective. Uh, and credibility uh, will be destroyed. Uh, and I'd also encourage China uh, to take the similar action against Taiwan. And at that time, that China not only uh, is acting uh, in a world where the Western democracy, the, the value uh, is, de uh, um, is strongly, uh, its credibility has been destroyed uh, in a large way, but also it uh, reinvigorates uh, Russia, although Russia's military potential has been depleted uh, due to its war in Ukraine. But uh, Russia has actually uh, came out victorious, it, so that its support for the uh, China will also be uh, much stronger. Uh, and so, so Taiwan is going to face uh, something that's more stronger uh, than just a single China alone. And um, uh, so that we cannot afford to have a losing Ukraine uh, when we talk about the security about Taiwan. But of course, I do know that the, some in the United States, uh, including uh, some of the uh, Trump um, presidency, the strong supporters, they do disagree with uh, this argument. So that when the uh, Joseph Wu, our foreign minister, uh, right now na our national security advisors, <coughs> his article in the Foreign Affairs, uh, immediately Elbridge Kobe uh, in the in the X and the tweet, uh, sort of mock him uh, about uh, his assertion. But uh, I think uh, what President Tsai and also the Joseph Wu, uh, his argument in the foreign affairs is still valid. In terms of deterring China um, with the success or the eventual success of Ukraine, um, Professor Lee, do you feel this has a direct impact on Xi Jinping's ambitions on using military force to take over Taiwan? I think in terms of uh, whether China's uh, will or uh, capability of taking over China can be deterred, uh, the question uh, of this question. I think uh, in terms of political will, no, right? You mean in China there's no political yes. will? In terms of political will, how, how will China uh, be deterred about uh, unification with Taiwan? This has already said in history, so for a long time, we understand the, the position of China. For bigger country, especially uh, now is a rising power, uh, become a G2, right? So uh, it's kind of difficult for them to reverse their policy immediately, just like that. So I think uh, uh, to deter their political will is very difficult. But at the same time also, uh, China already uh, said clearly under what con conditions and in, in what situations they will use the force, right? But in terms of the uh, capabilities, this is another thing I wanted to uh, mention here that uh, I agree with uh, uh, Dr. Lai about uh, uh, the initiative, the new ini security initiatives from uh, China in the past uh, did not receive a really, really rich uh, feedbacks. But uh, um, uh, the approaches are what I'm seeing right now is different from uh, the past is that they kind of make Russia as a strong alliance to do this together. In the past, probably only China will do that, uh, but now uh, with uh, Russia as uh, alliances, so the the so-called the, uh, the stabilization uh, stabi stabilizing force is stronger than before. Okay, so I mean, in, in what we are seeing right now uh, through this visit is the enhancement of these bilateral ties, so that will uh, help original China's plan. Okay, so that's uh, that's my kind consider here. So in terms of uh, deterrence as well, uh, the same thing. We know that the U.S. have the new deterrence policy. They kind of make all the, uh, the, the alliance work together to deter uh, the rise of China in military sense. But ch what uh, China is doing right now is kind of counter strategy as well. They align with Russia.
I wanted to draw back to what you mentioned earlier, President, um, in terms of um, former President Trump's team or some people who are close to him talking about abandoning um, Ukraine and perhaps focusing on different areas. And what was interesting was President Trump has called the Xi Putin meeting getting together to do damage. He even went to say that she fully expects to take Taiwan. Does this hint anything in terms of a potential policy towards Taiwan if Trump is reelected? Um, well, all we see is right now is a, a single statement uh, from single sentence from the pres uh, pr uh, president nom uh, nominee. He is not even a nominee, <laughs> but presumptive uh, nominee. Yeah, mm -hmm. presumptive the uh, Republican presidential uh, candidate uh, Trump. Um, so that uh, uh, we do not have uh, anything other than that. So it's difficult to really come up with a policy uh, conjectures uh, associated with these uh, sentences. But uh, all we do uh, in terms of the uh, uh, discussion is that the, uh, uh, the mega crowd within the Republican or the, uh, uh, the Trump supporter within the Republican, they do, uh, in various uh, reasons, uh, believe that the, the, the Ukraine, uh, U.S. support for the Ukraine should come to a limit. They should stop, uh, either because the, uh, uh, the Europe uh, hasn't really stepped up so that the United States cannot fight a war that European they should uh, defend for themselves, or the U.S. Uh, only have a, a limit uh, resources, and U.S. has to uh, uh, bring those uh, resources into the uh, uh, area where uh, the national security will matter to U.S. most, uh, that is Taiwan. And or the United States, basically, uh, the, some situation within Ukraine, then Ukraine has been losing two years. You just cut the losses and uh, decided for the next phase of the, uh, uh, where you want to invest. Uh, so basically, there, uh, it's a combination of several different factors. Some of them, they're even contradictory to, to each other. Uh, so it is not a, a very uh, coherent um, policy uh, discourses that uh, we found out in, within Republican but uh, it just came out in this way. Speaking of the U.S., Professor Lee, there's been sanctions going on since the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and um, some say it has been successful, some said it was limited. How do you see this in terms of Russia, now that China is continuing to provide financial support, mm -hmm. and many say that this visit was actually to secure that economic support from China? Mm -hmm. And with that, do you feel that you, Russia will take offensive in terms of offensive action in Ukraine mm. to take more land or to invade further into the country. Mm. And there's always a possibility, right? But in terms of the, uh, whether the sanction works on uh, China or why the China cooperate with the sanction. Uh, we know that seeing from the data uh, so far, uh, no, no signs for uh, China's cooperation, right? The, uh, the, the transfer of uh, dual use civilian and military dual use technology to Russia continue to increase, do not uh, reduce. Uh, we don't see the reduction there. And then also now you mentioned that the financial part. We know that uh, uh, China's banking system, they have their own system since two, uh, 2012. So uh, when they uh, conduct trade and business, they do not necessarily use uh, US dollars, right? So uh, this is also uh, create a, a, a uh, another channel for 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 Russia to gain uh, financial support. So uh, I think that the, the trade the I are actually at level highs and yes, it's as well. the highest. So in this is back to uh, what I say about this isolation, right? If uh, Russia feel uh, is isolated, of course he, uh, the business over there has to seek another channel to make profits and uh, the look east policy. That means the Chinese market. So that's why they, uh, their trade and investment relations enhanced a lot in the last year. So will this embolden Putin to do more in terms of the Ukraine war? Do you feel that he would invade and take over Kharkiv and other territories? And mm. I think that uh, definitely that's part of the Putin's plan, uh, especially before the, uh, the Paris Olympics. Uh, he wanted to seize as, mo as much more in order to establish a, a main positions uh, uh, for the negotiation for the war's ends. Um, and right now you try to uh, get more and seize more so that uh, you will be uh, in the much uh, commanding height uh, than the, uh, the uh, uh, Ukraine uh, for the final settlement. Uh, 
Uh, so I think that's uh, expected and a very reasonable uh, anticipation from the Russia side. Can we expect a settlement, the future Ukraine? Mm -hmm. We know that they are planning they are planning a, a international conference of peace and something right in Geneva, and uh, but uh, without inviting Russia, if that's the case, I don't know whether that's true. But if that's the case, then still uh, Russia. So it it has to be all the parties involved should attend the conference to really negotiate. But we do see that uh, in this visit, uh, the uh, s statement came out from uh, this visit, also mentioned that both sides agree that the political negotiation is the best uh, solution. So they still leave that o door open, right? No say that we are not going to negotiate at all. So it all depends on the settings and who is the host, who is the, who is the mediator, who is the host of the international conference. And, uh, has to be trusted by Russia as well. President Lai, what, what do you think? Do you think we'll see a settlement before the Russia? Before no, no, I, I do not think that's going to be likely, and, and not before the end of this year, because the, uh, uh, although Russia right now has a strong advancement, uh, and probably they want to take as much more uh, before the Paris Olympics, but the, right now Ukraine started to receive the new f uh, flash of the uh, incoming support, uh, whether weaponry or munitions. And Ukraine definitely wanted to uh, first defend and then try to retake some of the lost territory uh, due to the Russia's new offensive. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, both sides, it will be until one side feels that uh, they just cannot hold on anymore, uh, then the, uh, the will for the politically negotiated end uh, will come out. Thank you very much, President Lai, Professor Lee, for both of your insights. If you liked our show, please search for us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, and hit subscribe on our channel. Thank you for watching our show today. Stay safe and see you next time.